Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the writer's strike, the actor's strike in Hollywood. And uh, they're trying to divide and conquer now, which I think is very, very ironic because that's what these people were accusing the studios of doing to them. Right. Well, maybe they figured turnabout's fair play. That could be. I mean, this thing's getting ugly and it's not going to be resolved, I don't think. I could be wrong. But all indicators are this is not going to be resolved until at least the end of the year. And I think it was by design. I think the studios were just looking to save a bunch of money. So they were like, yeah, we're just not going to pay anybody until the end of the year. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's on you, fam. That's their attitude. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo! Uh, go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news. Go out to piratesandprincesses.net for more objective Disney news. Disney being one of the big companies that they're having a beef with mm -hmm. right now. So before we get into this, uh, just Fran Drescher got re-elected as SAG after president. Oh, they, yeah, they said that that's what, she, I think that's kind of one of the reasons she was doing some of the stuff she was doing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's like, look, and again, we've said all along, if you can get the money, get the money, right? Mm -hmm. You can get it, get it. I'm not going to fault anybody taking a good deal for themselves. Uh, that being said, we've also said that it's, it's kind of unrealistic given the financial situation that these these studios are in and everybody keeps saying well they're just pleading poverty they're not really broke i'm like no they're actually they're actually pretty damn broke mm -hmm. i mean even uh you know geeky covered the d23 announcements yesterday for disney oh, yeah. and it was a big pile of nothing it pretty it was, much it was just mostly hey here's the stuff we've already been working on that we've told you about before it's finally opening after years and here's a couple meet and greets and a couple of reskins of attractions who aren't you excited oh and then trust us something really really big is coming someday. but we can't talk about it yet but i swear <laughs> i have to wait and see what, how the financials go at the end of the fiscal year but i swear gotta wait and see how much comcast is gonna ca charge us for Hulu. but I, i'm telling you it's big yeah. yeah, yeah, that's kind of the that's kind of what's going on there because I mean Comcast Universal. I mean they're like, yeah, we're building a whole new park and we're mm -hmm. adding all kinds of rides to our existing parks and we're gonna build more hotels and we're gonna build more of this and more of that. And Disney's like, we got a new Figment costume and it looks like dog crap because it's cheap. The old costume was so much better. Anyway, so yeah, apparently, um, apparently they put out a statement, uh, SAG after and the WGA that some of the studios and amp tip were actually open to negotiation and some of them weren't. And again, the attempt to be to divide and conquer, like, mm -hmm. Hey guys, if you want to cut the, cut the deal with us, just leave amp tip and come over here and uh, we'll cut that deal with you. Yeah. Leave your, your group, your, 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 your protection to come to, uh, to come to us and let us have what we want. Right, which is exactly what they told their members not to do. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about FICOR status and how it's a big no-no if you're a, a union Yeah, because it's member. all about the unions getting money. Yes. That's yes. why they don't want the, the writers cut back in the writers' rooms because they have less writers. It's less money for the union. The unions got happy holding on to all that money, and now there's not enough jobs for people, and they're not going to make all that money. And that's why they're telling influencers they have to toe the line or they might not ever be able to join SAG-AFTRA or um, WGA or any of that stuff. And here's the thing. You know what? When push comes to shove, they'll want your money. They'll let you join. They'll let you join. it's all about them getting money. Yeah, that that exactly. They get a cut of everything you do. So, yeah, they'll, they'll take you back. They'll say if you're making big bucks. And you're 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 bringing it, and you're getting all kinds of work. They'll they'll absolutely. Oh yeah. They'll they'll take it back. They'll take it back. Um. So yeah, they said that uh, supposedly the WGA said that several of the legacy companies in Amp Tip have privately expressed both the desire and willingness to negotiate an agreement that adequately addresses writers' issues. Well, it's probably true though, because adequately addresses writers' issues. What we're going to give them everything was adequately addressed except for the damn writers' room. So, you know, I'm sure it's probably true. It's like there are a lot of writers who are probably pissed when they found out about the deal that they were offered and how they walked away from it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's true. I'm sure there's writers that want to that want to take the deal that was offered. Uh, the AmpTip member companies are aligned and are negotiating together to reach a resolution. Any suggestion to the contrary is false. And there are a whole lot of them in amp tip, but they're basically saying like, no, that's that's bullshit. We're all in this together. We're not going to. If we're being honest, a couple of them probably did do that. They probably did. I mean, just like I said, like there's writers who are yeah. mad they didn't take the deal. It's, it's, you know, they're supposed to be unified front, but I'm sure there's people in the group who, you know, 
want it to, to be over and move forward. Now, this is interesting, though. They said Amp Tip went on to say every member of the company of Amp Tip wants a fair deal for writers and actors and end of the strikes, which are affecting not only our writer and actor colleagues, but also thousands of others yes, across. The- that's you, what I'm worried about. You mostly. greedy bastards. You're affecting. All- but it is. I mean, the strikes are putting other people out of work. People are losing I mean, if they're homes. talking about unemployment, unemployment should be given to the people that are out of work because of the strikes that have nothing to do with the strikes. Yeah. And this is again back to AmpTip. They said this is this is why the AmpTip has repeatedly put forward offers that address major priorities of the WGA, including the last round of offers on August seventeenth and eighteenth. On many issues, AI among them, we are close. Our AI proposal has provided clear yes. guarantees that's not going to affect writers' pay. Uh, it's AI good. And the important topic of mandatory staffing, the WGA has remained entrenched in its original position. So they're getting every fucking thing they want, except yes. you're not giving us the staffing requirements that we want so we can keep all our members paying us dues. Uh, That's what they're going to they're, they're going to they're gonna tank everyone and they're going to continue to strike and continue to you know hurt those that you know aren't even actors or writers because they didn't get minimum you know staffing requirements that were absolutely ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's greedy and selfish. And we, we agreed with you on everything but that. That's, you're that's being, basically You're it. kind of being dicks. You know, I'm sorry. Well, this is according to the WGA. They said that one, one executive. Wait, 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 wait. One executive. One executive told the guild they needed, uh, told the guild they needed to deal badly. And they said they one. were one. They said they reviewed the proposals and they did not commit to a specific deal. They said the proposals would not affect their company's bottom line, and they recognized they must give more than usual to settle this but they negotiation. Were. Uh, another one said they needed to deal badly. They do. I mean, everybody look. The Hollywood's basically turned off at this point, but there's plenty of blame to go around here, you know. And again, that that last deal that Amtip offered was damn close to everything they wanted except for the the WGA. We're not hearing much about the actors. SAG after. Yeah. We're not hearing much. Um, So yeah, everybody's kind of, you know, like what the hell we're at. And it's not, again, it's not just, it's not just the content. That's not everything. It's, it's the entire industry in LA and Hollywood, you know, revolves around entertainment. And when you shut down these productions, you're putting out even like the baker down the street. That was the one that, you know, made the donuts for the people working on the production. Right. Well, they're not doing as well as they used to because nobody's buying their donuts. Right. Now. You know, or the people that might come in buy donuts, maybe they worked in Hollywood and uh, now they can't afford donuts. You know, so yeah. you're putting the damn donut baker out of over, business too. Over minimum uh, requirements that you're demanding for the writer's room because y'all want to stay employed when there's not room for all of you. Because... Because eleven to fourteen thousand dollars a week wasn't enough. You know, you know how you know, yeah, right. You know how you know you have to go from a bigger house to a smaller house, and you're like, you have too much shit. You can't put the, all that stuff in your new house. You have to get rid of some of it. It's like that. Y'all won't fit in the tiny house. There's just no way that there's room for you. I am an expert on tiny houses. I have watched so <laughs> many hours. Tiny house building, moving shows. And it's so weird. You always see these these big families. They're like, yeah, we want to downsize from our 4,000 square foot home into a 180 square foot it's tiny not, house. That's not that small. But it's yeah. like, I think we can all fit in here. And here, you know, like they have like six kids. And they're like, yeah, these kids are going to sleep in the bed that's under the other bed. And this one, we're going to open the floor and we're going to stuff Timmy down in the hole. <laughs> we're all going to work somehow. Then the best one was like, I, I looked at this family. I'm like, there's no way in hell you can downgrade. And they put the tiny house in the backyard of their regular house. I'm like, that's called a playhouse. Yes. You didn't move. You didn't do anything. And they were like, they just panned over and they're like, there's their full size house, but they're just playing pretend in the backyard. We're going to pretend we're hipsters and live in the tiny yeah, house. We, when we get tired of it, we can go back to the big house. We can go I back mean, to the real it's world. Like, it's like, you yeah. know, you, you got, you went, you downsized to a smaller house because you, you couldn't afford the bigger one. And you, you can't take all your stuff with you. It will not all fit. It's like that. So what's interesting, though, is they're like, yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. And, and Warner Brothers Discovery said they're going to lose like $500 million or something. Which isn't a lot when you consider they lost that much just on CNN Plus in like three weeks. Right. I mean, you start to get to the point with these companies. And that probably is the point with the actors. And um, To be fair, the actors and directors are like, yeah, we see how much money you guys make. Like to you, like this is nothing, right? The funny thing is with Warner Brothers, though, is they said they're not going to cave at all. David Zaslav is like, we're not. We gave a fair deal. We're not going to cave. Their stock went up. 
their stock actually went up. I know oh, it's not that again, great to begin with. It yeah. wasn't that great to begin with. But 11 bucks is not on the price. It's price. not good. Okay, I'm going to be... Well, okay, so then to put it back into their court, Warner Brothers Discovery stock is only worth $11 a share. Where do you think they're going to get the money? They just That's lost, a good point. They just lost hundreds of millions of dollars just on DC movies. I recorded an Aquaman video today. Where do you think they're going to get the money to pay? Well, you? Disney, they're having to pay Comcast all kinds of money, you know, for Hulu, and they're they're doing dollar ninety nine deals to get people to to do Disney Plus subscriptions at the end of the year to raise their subscriber count. They're announcing like nothings, but you know, reskins and meet and greets as their big you know theme park stuff. While Epic Universe is coming for them, where do you think they're going to get the money? Yeah, I know, right? Well, Warner Brothers, they pull the plug and people are like, they did to send a message. They might have, but it could just be that they don't have the money. They pull the plug on producer deals, J.J. Abrams deal and Mindy Kalings. We talked about that the other day. And they're like, these companies are, yes, they make a lot of money. Yes, they made record profits during the pandemic. But you know, those people who watch this shit and were watching the decline, it's like, these are all signs of a company panicking because the coffers are being emptied out. And they're like, oh my God. If we could just not pay anybody for a year, because people are still going to pay us our subscriptions or whatever, because we got content in the pipeline. Well, they're paying, but they're paying for other content. Like, they're getting it from you know, other countries Cheaper. and stuff now. Yeah. Because they're not actually bankrolling the production. They're like, oh, we'll just license your already well, this, produced yeah, content. Yeah, the studios that are able to get these deals, this, this is not going to work the way they think. Like, they're making these, you know, you know, exceptions for these other you know, these other independents, right? Mm. And you're going out and letting them go do get get paid and do the acting jobs for that. They're going to, in turn, sell to Netflix, you yes. know, Warner Brothers, yep. Disney, or whatever to put on their services, and then for whatever fee they have, and then they're going to get the content anyway. Yeah. So you're biting yourself in the ass, and it's hard to do, but you, uh, they found a way to reach around. Uh, they, they had to do another another uh, press release or something. They had to address those those side deals again, those interim agreements. Because again, if it were me, and I saw that some people got to work while I was out there on the picket line, or I was working, you know, I wasn't an actor or writer, but I was working as a grip or something. I'm like, the, my production shut down, but you're letting these other people. What well, the that's actual? Like, well, help? you can go work for those other people too, you know, but maybe you can't. You maybe know? you can't. You I know? just I. The whole thing is, is ridiculous, and just there, there, for people that are going on about greed and going on and on about greed and the and the, and the big the big uh, studios and the greed. I'm not saying the studios aren't greedy. I'm sure they are. I have no doubt of that. But then in turn, we can make the same argument about you. You were given all kinds, everything you wanted except for the the stupid writers' room mandates, which were ridiculous to begin with, and pretty much everybody agrees on that 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 was you know a, a overreach. And you said no. Because you're greedy. And then meanwhile, people who aren't, you know, below the line or people that aren't like the actors or writers are, you know, they're out there losing their houses and stuff, too. And they're out there having trouble, too, because of the choices you're making. And they're and in their mind, you're the greedy ones. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, I know. This is it's not I don't think it's going to end before the end of the year. But I want to bring this up before we wrap the video up, uh, because this reminds me of the FICOR situation, which I, I'm telling you right now. You guys are going to have to learn the term FICOR because I think after the dust settles from this, you know, whichever way it goes, a lot more actors and writers are going to go FICOR. So FICOR is basically when you resign from the union, you get to keep some some benefits of that and you give them some money, but you're not a, a card carrying member of the union. And people in Hollywood, a lot of them really look down their noses at FICOR members and, you know, there's attempts to blacklist them and shit like that. However, you're in good company because George Lucas resigned from the Writers Guild back in the early 80s. Uh, we've got uh, Sylvester Stallone. He resigned. You know, they get to a point where it's like the union does nothing for me and well, it's actually holding me back. What this has here, membership in the acting guild is more or less a professional necessity for actors trying to build careers in Hollywood. Yes, because they make it that you have to. It's like the mafia of Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, well, literally. I mean, people always talk about unions and the mafia connection. I'm just saying. Um, they said there's an alternate path for those looking to avoid the restrictions. It's called FICOR. Nobody talks about it because the more you talk about it, the more you're like, well, wait, I get some of the benefits of being union, but I don't actually have to kowtow to the union. That mm -hmm. sounds like a pretty good deal to me. But they probably go out of the way to try to get you. Get they do. You, you know, yeah. They do. They actually say well, on. It shows you even more why they're like a mafia more than anything else. The only reason it's allowed at all is there was a Supreme Court ruling, which we'll get to. But yeah, it's financial core. Um, 
performers looking to maximize their potential for work, save money on initiation fees, and insure themselves and their families without fully committing to the guild. So again, you get some of the benefits of being a guild member and you kick them over a couple of bucks, but you don't have to go on strike. You don't have to quit working. You don't have to play by their rules. Uh, the, the alternative exists only because of a 1963 Supreme Court ruling, which allowed non-union auto workers to access perks from union advancements so long as they paid fees for the core benefits they received from General Motors. So it is not uh, looked upon favorably in Hollywood. In fact, they have pages on it in the WGA uh, sites and on SAG-AFTRA. But I think what's going to ha- I think what's going to happen is more people are going to exercise that option and they're not going to have much of a choice, but be like, you know, it's either we get some money from them or we get no money. Well, what from sucks them. is they're saying, basically they're saying when you're eligible to join the guild, you can establish a Vicor employee and you can work on both union and non-union projects. Yeah. Well, here's the kicker. There's a bunch of actors out there getting special permission from the union to go work on projects, you know, outside, you know, outside of the, the, the union area, the strike and stuff. They're allowed to do that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, how come they are? Yeah. I, mean, I guess I get that those studios are independent and they're not part of Amp Tip. But you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it doesn't matter because there's these other people who have to you know, get special permissions anyway. There's no official blacklisting of FICOR actors that prevents them from switching over to SAG after. There is an unspoken taboo for those who choose to float in between. And that was actually, I watched a video on someone she worked on, uh, I think she was on Stranger Things or she was on some Netflix show and she said that she was FICOR. And she said, I'm gonna be honest, she said, my phone doesn't ring as much as, as somebody who is you know, committed to the union is, but she's also like, I like to keep my options open. And she yeah. said, during a strike like this is great because I can still take work. But then my friends that are in the union are pissed at me. I can still go to conventions and take money. I can, I can still, I can still uh, you know, talk about projects. I can still go promote stuff for films and shows. Yeah, they said they strongly discourage it. Yeah, but, because they want all the money. Right. And but, they want to make sure they have all the control over you. Yeah, but they can't. It's illegal to stop people because of the Supreme Court ruling. I guarantee you if that there, that Supreme Court ruling wasn't in place, they'd be like, hell no, you're, ne- you're never going to work in this town. And it is kind that's of unspoken. Telling, but that's what they're yeah. telling all the, all the influencers. You do what we say or you're, it's going to be real shame that you never get to work in Hollywood because, you know, you didn't join the, the, the union. And that just tells you right there. Yeah. This Actors Guild union is controlling everything. And it's about the money. Mm, absolutely. And the control. And the control and the control, all of this is all of this is crumbling down. So we're going to have a very different Hollywood at the end of it uh, for sure. So we're going to wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.